the rabbit hole and how deep and how far we want to go is really how far, how much do you want to discover about your true nature? We have to go beyond our senses to create a new paradigm. It may very well be that what's going on inside of you, in your brain, in your nervous system, in your nature of observation, how memory works, how mind works, it may very well be that what is happening there is some kind of observer matter interrelationship which is indeed making things real for you, affecting how you perceive reality. It's not changing the reality out there. It's, you, you know, you're not changing big chairs and big trucks and bulldozers and rockets taking off. You're not changing those, no. But you're changing how you perceive things and maybe how you think about the things, how you feel about things, how you sense the world. The infinite information that the brain is processing every single second tells us that there's more to the world than we're perceiving. However, every single time we're immersed in an experience with our senses, seeing, smelling, tasting, feeling, as we're immersed centrally in our reality. We know nothing about reality and all of our sense of so-called reality out there is filtered through our sense organs. The brain processes 400 billion bits of information a second, but we're only aware of 2,000 of those. That means that reality is happening in the brain all the time. Quantum mechanics is really the play and display of information, the play and display of potentiality, waves of information, waves of potential electron. And it's important, the word potential. This isn't the world of electrons. It's the world of potential electrons. But when you have, you have to ask the question, waves of what, really? What is the field that is waving? Is it the ocean? No, it's a universal ocean, an ocean of pure potentiality, an ocean of abstract potential existence. We call it the unified field, or super strength field. And that's what we're made of. We were all taught in school that the world is made of stuff, of matter, of mass, of atoms. Atoms make up molecules, molecules make up materials, and everything is made of that. But atoms actually are mostly empty. For example, if this ball were the nucleus of an atom, a proton and a hydrogen atom, for example, then the electron circling this, which would describe the outer limits of that atom, would be out by that mountain over there, roughly 20 miles away. And everything in between is empty. In fact, the universe is mostly empty. However, when we go down in scale, in the emptiness, we eventually come to a level, the fundamental level of space-time geometry, the fine basement level of the universe, where there's information, there's a pattern. It's called the Planck scale, and it's the fabric of the universe. And at that level, there's information that's been there since the Big Bang. So most of the universe, even of matter, is actually empty. Most people think that the vacuum is empty. But for internal self-consistency consistency of quantum mechanics and relativity theory, there is required to be the equivalent of 10 to the 94 grams of mass energy, each gram being E equals mc squared kind of energy. Now that's a huge number, but what does it mean practically? If I take the volume or take the vacuum within a single hydrogen atom, that's about 10 to the minus 23 cubic centimeters. If I take that amount of vacuum, and I take the latent energy in that, there is a trillion times more energy there than in all of the mass of all of the stars and all of the planets out to 20 billion light years. That's big. That's big. And if consciousness allows you to control even a small fraction of that, Creating a Big Bang is no problem. The tighter physics have tried to grasp on to physical reality, to understand what it's really made of, what are the core building blocks of life, at the basis of it all. Life, the universe, slips through your fingers. 
and you come up with something that's increasingly abstract, increasingly abstract, to the come to the realm of pure abstraction. And that's what the unified field is. It's pure abstract potential, pure abstract being, pure abstract self-aware consciousness, which rises in waves of vibration to give rise to the particles, the people, everything we see in the vast universe. REG machines, random event generators, are electronic tosses of the coin. One type of random number generator experiment that's been conducted many, many times, hundreds of times, over the past four decades or so, since around the 1960s, has been a random generator that only produces sequences of random bits, zeros and ones, like, like flipping coins. And you would simply ask somebody to press a button, it would produce 200 bits, and you would ask them to say, well, try to make it produce more one bits than zero bits. And when you take the entire body of, of literature, all of the hundreds of experiments that have been done, you can ask a single question. Did it matter that people were trying to push it towards ones or push it towards zeros? And the overall answer is, yes, it does matter. That somehow intention is correlated with the operation, with the output of these random number generators, such that if you wish for more ones, somehow the generators produce more ones. There are even experiments now that you are seeing light flashes and your brain, brain potentials picks up the signature of those light flashes, what is called evoke potential, that can be measured in an EEG machine connected to your brain. And I am sitting over there, no light flashes, I cannot see you, and still my brain potentials, because I am correlated with you in terms of intention, I intend to be directly communicative with your experiences. That intention produces me, gives me the capability of simultaneously having the similar brain potential in my brain. It was first done by Jacobo Greenberg at the University of Mexico and now repeated by Peter Fenwick uh, in London. We are running the holodeck. We we are collectively, it's there, it's, it, has, it has such flexibility that anything you can imagine, it will create. And you learn, I mean, your intention causes this thing to materialize once you're conscious enough. Most people don't affect reality in a consistent, substantial way because they don't believe they can. The mind is structured in layers, just like the universe is structured in layers, from superficial to profound. And if we use the mind at a very superficial level of ordinary thought, we have very limited power. We can barely move a speck of dust across a tabletop without using our hands. So weak can consciousness be. But at the deepest level of consciousness, consciousness creates universes. There literally are different worlds in which we live. There's the macroscopic world that we see. There's the world of ourselves. There's the world of our atoms. There's the world of our nuclei. These are each totally different worlds. They have their own language, they have their own mathematics. They're not just small. Each is totally different, but they're complementary. Because I am my atoms, but I am also myself. I'm also my macroscopic physiology. It's all true. They're just different levels of truth. The deepest level of truth uncovered by science and by philosophy is the fundamental truth of unity. At that deepest subnuclear level of our reality, you and I are literally one, one, one. Two points. First of all, I want to thank David for uh, healthy skepticism is important, and extraordinary claims require extraordinary proof. Um, now, the problem is that people defending the conventional approach to consciousness, brain equals mind equals computer, uh, behave as if they've got proof and we don't. And they got Okay, the part of mine. My PhD from Harvard, I went to CERN, a European laboratory for particle research, but perhaps I'm best known for the discovery of the now famous N equals one locally su supersymmetric flipped SU5 grand unified field theory. <laughs> Don't make the mistake of thinking that the scientific community is scientific. Uh, <laughs> <laughs>